What is your favorite thing about space? Go in there. Go in there. Anyone? Anyone? And then a very fortunate person with many things going right in my life gave Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, and Buzz Aldrin the opportunity to make an attempt to make the first landing. And all of us want to succeed, and we did. Did it work? Anyone? Anyone know the effects? And once we were in space, then we were floating around. But in getting there, the rocket goes faster and faster, and we're sort of pushed back in the, in the couch. Anyone know what this is, class? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone seen this before? Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there and Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Buzz Aldrin. Science! Hey everybody, Josh Peck here, doing something a little different today. This is not a part of the weekly show. Uh, I'm going to be speaking a little stronger in this video than I usually do, but I'm doing so because it's important. And this one instance is indicative of a larger growing phenomenon that is absolutely detrimental to our own causes and beliefs. If we don't get it in check and be stronger ourselves, this stuff will completely undo us to the point there will be nothing redeemable or respectable left. And I really believe that we're on that course now because we choose to follow people who do nothing but abuse us for their own personal gain. Now, there's a claim that's been going viral lately that Buzz Aldrin admitted he never went to the moon. Because we didn't go there, and and that's the way it happened. And, and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. It's pretty damning evidence, right? I mean, it's so obvious. He says it right there. At least that's what it would seem like without any context. This is obviously not the whole video. And in my opinion, those out there who are trying to push this as proof or even evidence that we never went to the moon are at best extremely lazy researchers who should not be in the business of uncovering the lies of the government or at worst, outright liars who only want extra clicks on their videos and they're completely willing and comfortable with profiting off of their notion that the public is as ignorant, gullible, stupid, and lazy as they are. Now, I know that sounds kind of harsh, but as we will see in the full context of the video, there just is no excuse for these lies. And listen, I'm not saying that people should not research and wonder if we ever really went to the moon or not. I mean, absolutely. Ask questions. Be skeptical. Look into it. You should. All that stuff is great. However, if someone is feeding you lies to support your belief, that should tell you that that source is not to be trusted. They don't respect you. They don't care about you. And they don't really care about the subject matter at hand. They don't take it seriously, which should be offensive to any serious researcher. So all it does is create more disinformation where we already have enough to weed through from the powers that be. So that's Josh Peck from Skywatch TV talking about the flurry of recent videos claiming that Buzz Aldrin admitted to not going on the moon, which I'm sure oh, the vast majority of you have already seen everywhere. And at first I almost did a video on this last week. I was really tempted to. And then I guess I kind of just felt like, you know, what's the point? It's like the damage is done or whatever. But I did go... I did see it within a few hours after, I believe the first place it came out was on the channel Feed Your Mind. That was the first place I saw it anyway. And immediately upon seeing it, of course, you, you're kind of astounded by what you hear Buzz saying. And But seriously, like, 
only a few moments of just honest inquiry and critical thinking, all you got to do is click on the link to the original video and right away, yeah, you see that the entire interview, Buzz is talking about going to space, being on the moon, why aren't we going back? He believes he went to space, or he's talking as if he does, and so... I even left a comment on the Feed Your Mind video saying, like, look, I'm sorry, this is a false, false alarm, you're taking this out of context, and of course immediately I was barraged with accusations of being a shill and all such nonsense, right? And the mob mentality just, you know, is in full force. I mean, as soon as I saw this video, and I saw the way people were reacting in the comments and just kind of jumping all over it, I, I knew it. You know, I just said to myself, like, watch, just everyone is going to jump on this, everyone is going to mirror this, it's just going to be ridiculous, and sure enough, that's exactly what happened, and now, who knows how many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views, if not even millions of views, this thing has gotten, and, uh, so yeah, I just kind of threw my hands up in the air, like, I can't believe, you know, this keeps happening, and people are just so intent on, on getting that smoking gun and getting that, that admission, that deathbed confession type of thing, that they're willing to j jump all over this even though it's clearly not what's happening. And then I watched this video by Josh Peck from a couple days ago. And man, I, I don't think I've ever seen Josh Peck so, so worked up, but he goes on for, I don't know, 15-20 fift, minutes and just, just kind of a rant. And the crazy thing is, is that despite how much I may disagree with Josh Peck over things like cosmology or now increasingly what the Christian perspective could or should be when it comes to the topic of quantum physics, which is kind of his area of focus as well, although from a very different angle. The thing is, he's absolutely right in this video about pretty much everything, but especially when it comes to just the, the complete disregard for integrity and honesty and critical thinking and just, yeah, the, the whole clickbait mentality that is just so prevalent especially within you know the flat earth community or the truth community or whatever and for the record i will even say that you know josh peck i don't think he ever mentioned flat earth specifically he wasn't just saying this was flat earthers but you know vast majority of the channels that i saw it on were of course well-known flat earth channels and uh it's just it's so aggravating why people would just be so unbalanced and so caught up in in a frenzy just because they know they're going to get views they know it's going to create a stir and everyone just apes it and mirrors it and in the end it makes everyone who does so just look really dumb and like josh said it it actually obscures the real evidence and the real proofs that much more that are already hard for people to digest or even find so it's just a sad state of affairs overall because on the one hand i definitely I'm convinced that the moon landings were fake. Not only that, but everything NASA's ever done. I think there's a preponderance of evidence to that end. But at the same time, I have to admit that this kind of nonsense just makes me want to tear my hair out. It's completely counterproductive. It's completely embarrassing. And it really will be the downfall of whatever movement somebody is trying to achieve. And probably already is. So I am speaking out on it, not because I think it's going to really make a dent. People are already going to do what they're going to do and believe what they're going to believe and convince themselves that it was it was like a subconscious admission <laughs> or like a Freudian slip or whatever. And it's like as if you can really prove when somebody's speaking that it's coming from their subconscious. I mean, it's it's nonsense. But overall, I'm just it grieves me because when I think of somebody like Josh Peck who out of so many people out there, you know, it's, it's a very interesting dynamic, an interesting kind of stance to be in uh, towards somebody who, uh, you know, I've been following him for many years and used to listen to his podcast and saw the transition to Skywatch TV. And then as I came into the flat earth research, obviously that created a, sort of a, a large divide. Uh, as many of you know, Skywatch TV is quite unequivocally opposed to flat earth. And so that's been a big deal. I have a, a very serious distaste for just the whole commercialized aspect of kind of what they do and trying to make it sort of like the 700 club type of model or whatever they're doing. But that being said, that doesn't mean that I just regard Josh Peck as my, as my enemy now and disregard him as a brother in Christ. Um, I will say at this point, I don't hear him preaching like the cosmic consciousness type of quantum mysticism similar to what we now hear Doug Hamp and m many other Christians starting to fall into. He hasn't crossed that line yet as far as I can tell. I mean, let me know if you've seen anything that 
has actually gone that far. And so at this point, it's just a matter of him being in that place of looking at, at quantum me mechanics and physics under the assumption that true science is valid truth and biblical revelation is valid truth and they should go hand in hand. And I think we all agree with that premise. So if you have the, the true interpretation of science and the true interpretation of the Bible, they'll go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. The question is, is you know, where does the valid science actually begin or end? And where does the pseudoscience and the occult science start to creep in? And that's really the, cr the crux of the whole debate, right? Like how far back does it go? So it just makes it really difficult. And if anything, I think it's this whole thing this with Buzz Aldrin and everything this past week, and then hearing Josh Peck's um, response to it and just being convicted. I just have felt very convicted that, you know, maybe I need to do a better job trying to reach out to individuals like him. I don't know if he would ever talk to me, but I, th I think if he was willing, we could have some, some interesting dialogue. and the very least show that, like, not everyone in Flat Earth or people who even believe in the fake moon landings are just this over the top and this this dishonest with their appraisal of, of things. But it just really all ties into something I've been thinking about for, for so long now, for so many months, if not years, but just... The whole question of flat earth and the the refrain that we hear so much about it being this psyop or it's it was intended to divide the truth movement and divide the church and divide christians and you know and that's a that's a difficult one because on the one hand you can look at it so much and go yeah it it has achieved that in many ways and whether that was by satan's design or the, whether that was just sort of inevitable or how much of it is just due to the nature of social media and for whatever reason, I think we, we have to stop and, and acknowledge that even if this was part of some sort of controlled release by the powers that be at this specific time, we can still see that God allowed it to be done in such a way, in such a timing to where, you know, Flat Earth and this cosmology debate is really the first major doctrinal issue, at least, you know, it was debated a long time ago, but then just kind of fell out of sight until just a few years ago. But, you know, in our modern era, this is the first major internal church doctrinal debate that has essentially taken place completely within the realm of social media and the internet. And that in itself is really bizarre. Because the, the thing about social media is that no matter how many people are out there making measured, thoughtful, carefully constructed arguments and discussions, and we, we all know that that's out there if you've been in this for a while. But you also know that the, the stuff that rises to the top, the stuff that most people see if they just casually Google it or casually do a YouTube search, is going to be the most audacious, the most bombastic, the most clickbait, the most extreme claims. And it's just, I mean, that's how social media works. Social media is just inevitably gravitates to the lowest common denominator. It gravitates towards the clickbait. It's just something about human nature and just, you know, the mob mentality. And so... Yeah, it's it's hard not to get discouraged in the midst of just the ongoing noise of hype and viral videos, and it's always the stuff that's really the least impressive evidence, or or just outright false, like this instance. I mean, did we not did did all these flat earthers not learn their lesson after the convex earth thing with the supposed documentary from South America and Bilu and all that stuff? I mean, this has happened how many times now? Just the bandwagon hype machine and people just mirroring things without... And in this case, it would only took you like 30 seconds to see that, no, this is being taken out of context. And it's not an admission. It's not a confession. Stop saying that it is. So yeah, even while I say this, speaking of mom mentality, the irony is that I know that even while I'm saying I, I agree with Josh Peck in what he says in this video, just by talking about him and leaving a link in the description, which I will do... Even, even doing that, I know that there's going to be people who hear what I'm saying and nevertheless go over there and go over to his video and blast him with all kinds of vitriol and obnoxious comments. And even if it's just a handful and hundreds of, or thousands of people are hearing me and, and sympathizing with, with what I'm saying, it only takes a few. It only takes like one or two people to go over there and just be obnoxious and to just do more damage. And that's kind of the whole predicament. That's the whole catch-22 of this whole thing. But yeah, it's it's not easy taking on these topics and, and asking these these broader 
theological and philosophical questions about the role of biblical revelation versus scientific revelation. But uh, somebody shared a link with me uh, recently about this. It was like a panel discussion from Lig Ligonier Ministries with R.C. Sproul, who, who passed away just in this past year. But I th I'm just going to play this at the end because I think it's very... It should be very um, eye-opening and sobering to, any, to people on both sides of this cosmology debate. Um, when we just think about... When you listen to, the, to the, what he's saying, just being asked a question about the age of the Earth... And then what he says about science, and it just emphasizes why this whole debate is important in our day and age, despite all the all the headaches and the nonsense and the social media circus that comes with it. However unavoidable all that stuff is, when I hear stuff like this said by R.C. Sproul, it's what makes me want to continue to to stand in that gap and try and try and hopefully be a, a voice of reason, a voice of biblical truth. And to remember to have love above all else. But just listen to this. It's about five minutes. Looking at the age of the universe, the question uh, comes up as far as young earth versus old earth. So, so one question is, is that a, is that a first order issue? Is that an intramural uh, discussion? Um, and then, and then, if we could just go down uh, the panel here and just briefly state that how you approach that question as far as age of the universe. RC, is it an intramural discussion? Uh, not for some people. For some people, it's it's an all or nothing issue. Um, when people ask me how old the Earth is, I tell them I don't know because I don't, I'm, and I'll tell you why I don't. In the first place, is the Bible does not give us a date of creation. Now, it gives us hints and inclinations that would indicate, in many cases, a young earth. And at the, at the same time, you get all this expanding universe and all this astronomical dating and triangulation and all of that stuff coming from outside the church. That makes me wonder, and I'll tell you why. I believe firmly that all of truth is God's truth, and I believe that God has not only given revelation in sacred Scripture, but also in the sacred Scripture itself tells us that God reveals Himself in nature, which we call natural revelation. And I once asked a seminary class of mine that was a conservative group, I said, how many of you believe that the God's revelation in Scripture is infallible? And they all raised their hand. I said, well, how many of you believe that God's revelation in nature is infallible? And nobody raised their hand. It's the same God who's giving the revelation. But what they were getting at was they were saying not every scientific theory is compatible with the Word of God. And that's true. But historically, the church's understanding of special revelation or the Bible has been corrected by students of natural revelation with the Copernican Revolution. Both Calvin and Luther rejected Copernicus as a heretic in the 16th century. I don't know anybody in Orthodox Christianity today who's pleading for geocentricity. Do you? Do you know anybody? In that case, the church had to say, yeah, but the church has said, look, we misinterpreted the teaching of the Bible with respect to the solar system, and thank you, uh, scientists, for correcting our misunderstanding. And so I think that we can learn from uh, non-believing scientists who are studying natural revelation they may get a, a better sense of the truth from their study of natural revelation than I get from ignoring natural revelation. So I have a high view of natural revelation, as I'm saying. However, if something can be shown to be definitively taught in the Bible without question, and somebody gives me a theory from natural that they think is based on natural revelation that contradicts the Word of God, I'm going to stand with the Word of God 100 times out of 100. But again, I have to repeat, I could have been a mistaken interpreter 
of the Word of God. But again, I don't, I don't have to face that problem because I believe that both spheres are God's spheres of revelation, and that truth has to be compatible. So if they seem to be in conflict, and if they are in conflict, if a theory of science, natural science, is in conflict with a theological theory and contradicts it, here's what I know for sure, somebody's wrong. And I don't leap to the conclusion that it has to be the scientist. It may be the theologian. But nor do I leap to the conclusion that it has to be the theologian. It can well be the scientist, because we've got fallible human beings interpreting uh, infallible natural revelation and fallible human beings interpreting uh, infallible special revelation. Now, having said that, I don't know. That's a long way to say I don't know how old the earth is, but I'd like to hear what Stephen says about that. <laughs>